One Economy is a global nonprofit that's dedicated to using technology to help people in underserved communities improve their lives. In the summer of 2009, the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles, AT&T, and One Economy began an ambitious project to bring free high-speed internet to nearly 3,000 residents at the Jordan Downs Public Housing Community in Watts, California. What's really great about this project is the first day of the project when the youth went out to work, they were able to come back and elaborate and give us all the information about the program. Uh, after putting the cylinders together, they talked about how they were able to uh, learn about wireless internet, how it's going to benefit the residents, and they were really, really excited. I was so happy because I realized that they learned so much that day and was a great work experience. And hopefully we'll have other work sites um, next program year uh, that are non-traditional jobs. Instead of sending them to parks and recs and having them do maintenance, they're actually learning a skill that'll benefit them in the future. So I think this was a great collaboration for housing and one economy. Benefits of broadband include connectivity and adoption. So by connecting these families here at Jordan Downs, we're bringing the connectivity. Um, soon to follow will be adoption programs, which include things like our digital connectors program to train aspiring internet users to use the internet, and computer purchase programs to help people get computers in the home. Access Services works with the affordable housing industry for a couple of reasons. First of all, that's where a lot of low-income people live. The second reason is because the affordable housing industry is mature and operates nationwide. As a result, we can bring the Jordan Downs model to hundreds of thousands of communities coast to coast. Once a community is wired, it needs a connection. This is Sunnydale. 4,000 residents throughout 800 units. Through those 800 units, there are 200 wireless routers bringing broadband access to a community a year ago didn't have it. Whose job is it to keep them connected? Mine. It's broad daylight. And as you can see, there are no kids playing outside. It's been 12 homicides since the beginning of the year, and it's only summer. In a community like this, the unemployment rate is about 30, 35%. And for the young people, it's about double that. They say knowledge is power, then it starts with information. That's why I'm here, to keep this community, my community, connected so that they can have broadband access whenever they need it. I'm Daniel Carter, and I'm a digital connector. Bringing the future closer takes energy. Sustaining the momentum, young people who understand the integral role information technology plays in the daily transformations of individuals and communities. It's a very special day for One Economy Corporation and the Digital Connectors, who are technology ambassadors for the San Francisco Mission District. At a recent event, FCC Chairman Julius Janikowski sat down with One Economy and young leaders of our Digital Connectors program. You see people coming in, not knowing what to do, and bridging that gap of us as teenagers, knowing what, how technology works with people who haven't seen a computer, to on a computer. You see that struggle, so we try to help that struggle become a strength for them. So this program has shown me a lot of things. Access with adoption coupled with content is sort of a triple play or a, a really great uh, opportunity. And so if, if the federal government is intentional about that, you can foster and sponsor hundreds and hundreds of Valencia Gardens across the country. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that, and, and in fact, that is the outline of what the FCC is looking at, and it's why I'm so pleased to be here today. The uh, Recovery Act, uh, passed by Congress, signed by the President, gives the FCC the responsibility of developing a national broadband strategy, and actually says that we should look at those three categories. Thank you all. Nice what a, what a tremendous thing that you're all doing. Excellent. After wires are pulled, the modems place, neighborhoods connected. One economy's vision widens with purposeful media. She's not my responsibility! Sure she she is! She's your family!
not your son who's waiting on you. You act like that's the only kid I've got. People agree that it's best to raise children in a two-parent home, and that's a very nice thought, like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, or equal pay for women. Us do. Soda is a huge contributor to childhood obesity. If your child protests to drinking water, try using frozen fruit as ice cubes to church it up a bit. For Amanda, TJ, Mike, and I, Yo-Yo, stay strong, America. I mean, baby, after eight years of where I cleft, the country looked beautiful. My name is Maria. I'm going to try to walk you through the process that we went through as a team. The first thing we did is we did a, a pretty comprehensive competitive overview. Just sites out there that we think that kids are going to to try to find information about science or science careers. You know, what's out there right now? How are kids finding this information? One of the first sites we found was studybeat.com. And uh, our biggest concern with this was it just looks a lot like homework. You know, from the, from the diagrams, those, that sort of artwork at the top, to the woman standing in front of the blackboard. And our biggest concern was, if we're trying to get teens to come to this advisor site to learn about careers in their spare time, it can't feel like another assignment. It has to be something cool and fun that they want to come to. On the other end of the spectrum, we found braincake.org, which is a site that's trying to encourage girls to pursue careers in uh, science and technology. We actually, we thought they went to a little bit too far on the other end of the spectrum. I mean, it has butterflies on it. I mean, it's a little too childish. Uh, and so from our perspective, we thought, you know, if, if the point of the site that we're going to build is to get kids to think about the people and the careers they're going to become, we can't be talking down to them and treating them like, you know, they're still children. The final uh, competitive site that I thought we'd, you know, we would share with you is a site that we found from PBS, which actually we liked quite a bit about this site. Uh, it's a site that has interviews with scientists, and so you can, you know, select the interview and, and you, you, know, you can read about what they do and you can see pictures about, you know, showing them at work. Um, so we really liked the idea of using real people to tell these stories. You know, it, Suzanne mentioned it in her opening speech that stories, that's what people connect with, much more than a, a blasé job description. We really wanted to focus on showing what these jobs entail and, and not so much have paragraphs and paragraphs of text. I mean, we were a little concerned that maybe teens with their potentially limited attention spans uh, may not want to read through these paragraphs and paragraphs of text. So the competitive overview was actually very beneficial for us because we came away with a list of key requirements. On the aesthetic side, we decided that the site absolutely has to be cool and sophisticated. We decided that video interviews is probably, you know, the best way to go. Um, we then, you know, had this little conundrum uh, of discovery, which, you know, okay, we started to picture ourselves as teens coming to the site. They start searching for whatever it is that interests them. But you know, what's the point of creating all of this razzle-dazzle, very entertaining content if the search results themselves were going to be listed in, in kind of a standard Google-esque text list? I mean, we'd be kind of shooting ourselves in the foot if the, the search results are pretty boring, even though the content itself is fantastic. Fortunately uh, for the team, we were able to find a really cool little site called Spezify. Uh, and Spezify is a visual search engine so you type in your query, and the results that you get back are as, really, they're presented in as visual a way as possible. So for the YouTube video, you see the thumbnail. 
uh, for news articles, you, you see the picture that accompanies the news article and not the article itself. Uh, for the eBay book that's for sale, you see the picture of the book and, and no other information. And if you want to find more information, you have to sort of mouse over it. So it really invites you to engage with and interact with, with the search results. So borrowing heavily <laughs> from Specify, we came up with our very first wireframe. Uh, and we thought that we would use mostly uh, pictures and video uh, and, and perhaps even tweets and things like that in, in our site. Uh, and, and this is how we, we would display it. But then, again, we took a step back and we started to, you know, get a little concerned that without any context to the search results, we were worried that maybe kids or teens would get lost in the search results, that it might be a little too overwhelming to come to the site and have all these, these cool little boxes to look at, but well, what do they mean and, and, and how do I find really what I want? So based on that, we decided that we really had to um, walk a fine line between structuring the results and still keeping them entertaining and freeform enough to keep it visually interesting. So to address this issue, we came up with this paradigm of six interview questions. And we decided that um, these six key questions would be something that every interview conducted for the site would contain. So the benefits of using the six questions are, first of all, on the home page, when you get to the home page, which we'll see in a minute, you know, it, you can see at a glance, here are the six questions, and I can dig in to the one that is most compelling for me. Um, and also, as a side note, using six questions really helps ensure consistency, both for visitors to the site and also for the digital connectors who we envision as being the first real providers of this content. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Steve from Pod Design, who is going to walk you through our final product. The um, way this tagging system works is that we populated it with all, these, all the subject matter that is already in, inside of the site. So by default, once you enter a search term, uh, our tag would, would open up to the question that has the most results for that particular question. So in this case, you see there's some results that we've had for the word science. And then I'm gonna, I want to broaden that search so I see that there's, there's a subject, subject for uh, computers. And we have more results. So um, I can mouse over here and see if I go to one of the other um, questions, I can see that there's another mentor inside of that question who's, who's, uh, who's answered that question, but also cross, uh, crosses over between uh, computers and science. Um, but I, I like the fact that there's more content on this tab, so I'm tabbing around and I find um, somebody who's a mentor who's um, seems like somebody who's, who's working in an area that's interest, uh, interesting to me, so I play his video. My name is Dominic Bannister, and I am a developer at Mon Economy Corporation. One of the coolest projects that I've worked on so far was uh, actually when I was in school. Uh, we had to develop a web server application using the Java programming language, and this was in a group of two, me and <clears throat> one other person. Uh, what was cool about it was that I had an opportunity to work with someone else and also learn about the server browser technology and at the end of uh, the semester uh, we became really good friends and after we both graduated uh, my teammate actually had a job before I did and uh, he referred me to the company that he was working at and I was hired as well so that's very cool. <laughs> Before I leave this page, um, you can see this page also offers um, ability to see related content, uh, see everything by this mentor, or all answer, answers to this questions by other mentors. So it's, it's, that, it's, it's this kind of um, uh, launching pad for exploration into other mentors, uh, related content that's at the heart of this. It's just a, a very versatile tool for um, exploring the content and letting the content be the hero. Um, so before I, I go to um, save Dominic into my profile, I sign in, I'm going to type some nonsense, and now I have a, a, a faves tag, and a, um, my uploads tag on the right side. So now I can go in and, and um, save Dominic to my favorites, so he's now located over here in my favorites tab. But also, I want to, if I go back to this tab, I want to see everything by, by Dominic, and you see if I roll over each of these big thumbnails here. Um, it's got the other video clips of how Dominic answered each of the six main questions. 
as well as things that he wrote about, um, photographs or, or videos that he might have uploaded. Um, we also have this send a mentor a comment box in here. And this, is, this box was intentionally designed this way because one of our focus groups that we did um, and some of the research that we did showed that uh, kids in this audience really don't use email anymore. What they like is just kind of a short um, text message length or, or update status, uh, wall posting type of interaction with somebody you want to communicate with. So instead of creating an, a more of a formal email dialogue that they consider part of the old, old people's world, our world, <laughs> we, uh, we kept the communication tag in here much more Twitter-like. Um, and he can contact his mentor and start the relationship that way. There's also a tab down the bottom where you see what other mentors might be interested in or other mentors you might be interested in following. Uh, one, one sidebar here is that um, we also like this idea of, of letting the viewers um, completely scan and change the color scheme of the, of the different tabs based to their liking. We, we kept the hexadecimal symbols in there because we thought as, as science-interested folk, they might, they might appreciate that. And then so if I go back to my faves, we see that there's a lot of past content in here. And this is something that I'm gonna introduce Joey Mucha, who's gonna um, show you how, how this favorites tag then becomes something that his company takes out into the social web and makes it portable. So the My Faves tab is the personalization of this experience. It's going to be unique to every user. And there you want that to extend both to the social graph. This is great where it is in the de as a destination site, but how do we actually spearhead this and let them create a viral nature and send it out to their social networks? And that's what Sprout has a solution for. So as you see here, you can click Share Your Faves. And what that's going to do is send you into an experience that allows you to take your faves that you've added, create a piece of content that is customized exactly to your, your favorites, and then share it in the social networks. So once you've added your, your favorite videos, your favorite interview questions, your favorite pictures, et cetera, you've created a piece of content that is both interactive and can live socially on the web. And at Sprout, we've done a ton of research on this, and we know that, that where we need to send this are you know, the major social networks and where people have a voice on Twitter. So the first experience on Facebook, you add, you've created your advisor favorites, and then you want to add this directly to your profile or in your stream. So just by clicking one button, it takes you to your Facebook. You can add a blurb, and then it shows up in your stream where other people in your social network can actually interact with that content, right? They can click Joey's, in this case, Advisor Faves, and then actually watch those videos live in the stream, in the social network. And it also links back to Advisor, so it has that functionality to both channel people back into the destination experience, which is on advisor.com. It also has the ability to be shared directly from here. So if, if, I, if I was someone else and I thought Joey's advisor faves were really interesting, I could take that in one click and share it to my network. So it has that social sharing viral aspect to it. The same goes for MySpace. Let's say you have a MySpace profile but not a Facebook profile. We offer that experience as well. So take your favorites to your Facebook, sorry, to your MySpace profile, post it as a bulletin, or actually drop it straight into your profile. And it, it works the same, so that whether it's the news feed in Facebook or your profile in Facebook, MySpace has the same analogy. Lastly, what if you want to share this with your Twitter followers? You hit the share to, share to Twitter button in Advisor, and then it automatically populates a tweet that links to your unique My Faves page in Advisor, and you can add a blurb there as well saying, check out my favorite interviews, quotes, so what this has done is created a vehicle for the compelling content on Advisor and takes it socially to and across the social graph. So you can share your content and help um, promote this experience where you are if your friends are necessarily on those social networks. So that's what we do at Sprout, create engaging experiences across the social graph. This, this project you know, has inspired us. I hope it's getting you excited and inspiring you. Um, earlier in the uh, video, you saw uh, video segments from things like Diary of a Single Mom and Real American Family. If you have content like that that you'd like to be, uh, to, like to be included in the public internet channel to, be in, 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 to get uh, your content out to the audience that we're reaching, we're reaching a, a wide audience that hasn't always been online. Um, and the, the, uh, it's, a, it's a different audience, and so maybe that's an audience of interest to you. Maybe there's something about your content that's, that can provide um, some, some good information to people. Maybe it's inspiring to people. 
And if there, you have something like that, we'd like you to contact us at pic.tv contact.